Good morning, everybody. It's Monday. The time for our check-in with each other after the holiday. And uh, it is a gorgeous, unseasonably warm day here in West Virginia. Uh, the snow that we had all last week and the bitter cold temperatures have gone away for a while. And we're uh, blessed with temperatures in the 40s. So it's a good day to go out and uh, take down some of the decorations I put outside and tidy up a little bit and get ready for the next blast of cold weather that I'm sure is going to come my way before long. Um, <clears throat> this will be the very last in the series of favorite words from different letters in the alphabet. So we are covering X, Y, and Z, the last three letters of the alphabet today, which is a fitting way uh, to end this letter journey that we began uh, 24 weeks ago. Doesn't seem possible that we have been going through the alphabet together that long, but indeed we have. My request of you, once we're through with the broadcast, is to go to my YouTube channels and look at some of the videos that you may have missed during the period we were going through the letter series. And for each letter, write down your favorite positive word and make a list of positive words with which you will start your new, exciting New Year's journey. It is an excellent opportunity for all of us to spend a little bit of time reflecting on the lessons we've learned this year and that we wish to carry forward with us into a brand spanking new year and which things we would like to learn from and leave behind as we progress in our journey. So uh, I'll check in with you next week and see if you came up with a positive vocabulary to begin your New Year's journey. I know uh, Rick will be speaking with you all on Friday. Uh, his brand new granddaughter has not yet arrived, so maybe she will be a New Year's baby. Who knows? Wouldn't that be exciting? Uh, <clears throat> I guess maybe I was a little bit like Superman this week and I got out my x-ray glasses and I began to look carefully at my year. Uh, and boy, oh gee, what a year it has definitely been for each and every one of us. Uh, we have had to look deep within ourselves to find the resolve and the perseverance and the dedication to stay on task and headed in the right direction. We haven't always been successful, but we have not quit trying. And as long as we keep on trying, we have the opportunity to find the success that we wish to achieve and the path that will lead us to that success. Uh, one thing I have learned during this time also is that I do not want to be a Xerox copy of anyone else. I want to be my unique self, not a carbon copy, but my unique self. And uh, I'm not like anybody else. You're not like anybody else. And while other people can help me in some ways, in fact, in all of the important ways, I need to do the work on me myself. I need to look at what I'm doing, decide if it works, keep what's good, discard what isn't working, and move forward. Um, when I looked into the uh, letter Y uh, for this talk, there are a whole bunch of, of letters that came to mind. And uh, two of them really struck a chord instantly. Uh, one, believe it or not, it's an actual word, is the word Y apostrophe A-L-L, -L, which is a word that those of us who live south of the Mason-Dixon line say a lot. It's called y'all. Uh, it's a sh shorthand for you, all of you. Uh, and we pronounce it y'all, which is sort of the way uh, people uh, in the 
uh, far north pronounce the word Y-A-W-L, which is the motion a boat makes. But y'all means all of you, so I do use that word uh, an awful lot, and sometimes people don't understand me, and that, that gave me just a little glimmer of understanding that while we talk to each other a lot, we don't always understand what the other person is saying. Uh, we may think we're being very clear and very precise in our language and our communication, but in fact, we may be saying things that other people just aren't hearing the same way we uh, tend to mean them when we're just yakking back and forth with each other in casual conversation. Uh, another word that really struck me is the word yonder. That's another word that's idiomatic of where I grew up. And that is something like, well, it's over yonder. Well, where's yonder? Who knows? But it's over yonder. That's where you'll find it for sure. And those gave me a, a great big smile. And words have had that power to bring forward all kinds of emotions. And the trick is, is to try to not yield to the negative words, to try to look for and express in yourself the positive and there are tons of positive words to empower your journey. And this is important because your mind actually listens to what you tell it. And if you tell your mind positive things, then that's what your mind is going to focus on. If you tell your mind negative things, then your mind tends to focus on that time after time after time. Uh, I was thinking back to when I was a young girl and... Uh, my feelings were hurt one time, and it had been a great day in almost every way except this one person had said something very unkind that really hurt my feelings. And it amazes me on retrospect that the words I focused on were the negative words that one person said. They played over and over and over over in my mind. I, my mind wanted to focus on those negatives. And it was probably 10,000 to one. All the good words sort of got pushed to the side. And I was super critical of myself. And I think all of us sometimes are less forgiving of ourselves than we are of others. And that's a resolution for me for the new year is to be kind to myself, as kind to myself as I try always to be to other people. Uh, also, when I was looking through these letters X, Y, and Z, I came across um, the word yesterday. And I am a firm believer that you cannot go back and change one second in your life. You, you could wish you could go back and redo, but life is a progression. And we don't have within us the ability and the time continuum to go back one millisecond in time even. Uh, what was, was. What is, is. And what will be is something we cannot possibly foresee. Uh, all I can do with yesterday is treasure the good memories and learn from all the experiences to make the best use of the time I have right now to be my best self. Uh, and that is really important to always remember is that in your yearbook of life, you can put snapshots in there of days gone by to fondly remember, but you don't get a do-over. They are what they are. They were what they were. And you need to yield to the pleasure of the good memories and move past the memories and learn from the memories that were not so good. Uh, this year has been totally zany. It has been what I always tell my grandchildren is a crazy year. Um, every once in a while, I'll say, would you all like to go with Grandma and have a crazy day? And they'll say, yes, Grandma, we would love that. Well, this has been not only a, 
a series of crazy days. It's been a totally zany year. You name it, it's probably happened. My son and I got to laughing the other day because it seemed like every small thing in my house that could possibly break, get lost, or um, not work as it was supposed to work and had worked in the past was going crazy. Uh, and he said, Mother, what have you done? And I said, I have no idea. I think a gremlin has come into my house and it is running through every appliance I have. It is messing up the TV signal, the internet, you name it. It was going nuts that day. It's been that kind of the year and it just happens sometimes. And when that happens, I just have to let go of it, take a deep breath and just laugh. Because uh, it was a zero control day. Um, these things that were going on were totally beyond my control. Uh, they were going to evolve as they were going to evolve. And then I was going to sort them out uh, when the time came with as much zeal and, and enthusiasm as I could possibly muster, given the zigzagging back and forth of everything that was going on. It seemed like a zillion different times I had to go back to square one, regroup, and start again. And that got me to thinking, too, about my weight loss journey. How many times have we messed up? And the trick is to learn from each time we messed up. And sometimes I think I'm a real slow learner because it takes a lot for me sometimes to learn the lesson that I need to learn from the experience. Uh, and try again. The, the real secret to success is to never quitting. I don't know when this time may be the time that everything aligns appropriately and in my best interest and I get right to where I want to be and figure out how to stay there once I've made the trip. Because a lot of times that's the real challenge for me is not knowing how to lose weight, but knowing how to maintain it once I have successfully lost it. Um, <clears throat> my dad used to say, uh, he had an expression, he said, a zebra doesn't change its stripes. Uh, well, gee, I hope that's not true uh, because I would like to change some of my stripes. Uh, I would at least like them to be a little bit looser in how they fit on me. Uh, and this year has been good for that in my zeal to hang on to the good things about my life and all the changes that were uh, necessary to make given the uh, uh, requirements we uh, that were made of us uh, for our protection and the protection of others. Uh, I made some really good choices and some really positive changes that helped me live this year in many ways truly successfully in terms of my health and in terms of my weight. Boy, there are a bunch of you on here. You just keep saying, hi, hello, how you doing? I'm watching you. Uh, I appreciate knowing you're there. You have no idea how much as we get toward the end of the year. I so appreciate your dedication to traveling on this journey with me throughout the well, it's been since March, so that's what, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, 10 months every week. We have been chatting with each other, and that's dedication, and I'm so grateful for your dedication. Um, <clears throat> as I have been reflecting today and using my x-ray vision uh, to examine this uh 12 months that I've been through and almost 365 days, not quite, but getting there really, really quickly. Um, I have had an opportunity to appreciate the learning that has taken uh, place in my life. One of the things I'm really proud of is I've learned to do something called Zoom. And I know many of you have learned to Zoom as well. And while I initially was hesitant because it was unknown and it required a learning curve and growth on my part. Uh, I found out when I got into it, 
that it was surprisingly easy to do. I had FaceTime uh, with the kids for a long period of time. I have Skyped with my grandkids since they were old enough to know how to do it. Uh, I had even uh, video messaged on Facebook. And Zoom is just another type of platform where we can meet face-to-face -face and talk with each other and <clears throat> discuss a variety of topics, express a variety of opinions, and feel connected to each other. And Zoom has allowed me to nourish that need for connectivity with all of you. I've been so grateful that so many of you have invited me uh, to your chapter Zoom meetings that you're having. And I hear people uh, every once in a while, they'll say, well, I'm too old to do that. Well, I went to a Zoom meeting the other day where many of the members were in their 90s and they were a happening group of women. I will tell you that in a heartbeat, they put me to shame. Um, so it's not age that holds us back. I think it's more state of mind that holds us back. We resist and we tell ourselves we can't. Where if we really relaxed and allowed ourselves the opportunity to learn and allowed someone else to help us, we would, in fact, find that the very thing that we said was too hard for us to do was not so hard after all. And that's been a wonderful reminder for me uh, during this year. It's, it's something I think that all of us need uh, to be cognizant of uh, on a day-to-day -day basis is we're never too young to learn some or too old to learn something new and no one is ever too young to teach you something new. Babies teach on a continuous basis. If you've ever, ever wanted to find out what pure joy is just in being in the world, watch a baby. He delights because he is. He is happy because he is. He doesn't need gifts. He doesn't need um, special arrangements. He just needs to be himself and delight in the world around him. And what a powerful lesson that is. I very often yearn for the innocence of children uh, and the ability to just let myself go into the moment at any period of time and yield to the experience as it, it unfolds before me. Um, those are sort of my X, Y, Z's uh, that I want to wrap up the year with. Uh, the one thing that I guess um, I need you to know is you are important. And why is one of those, the why word you, as I look at you, is a very important word to me. Uh, I am better for knowing you. You have lifted me up in my most despairing moments. You have comforted me. You have strengthened me. I yearn for the day when we will all be together again. But I have also learned during this time that in a very real way, you are there for me and I am there for you. Even though we may have to be in this moment physically apart. So remember your assignment for this week is to write down your ABC and come up with a list of positive words for each letter. And it can be just one or two important words to you for that letter. Uh, that will help you keep a positive frame of mind as this new year begins to unfold for us. Uh, I'm looking forward to all the opportunities we will be having to spend more important time together. I know it will come.
I know it is just a matter of needing to be patient, but it will happen. I want you to stay safe. <clears throat> I want you to be positive. I want you to find the way to live your best life where you are, as you are, in this moment and in time. I am so grateful for you, and I'm going to say goodbye for now. Thank you for the wonderful period of time we have shared, and I will see you next week. Take care now, everybody. Bye-bye.